ओम विश्व दर्पण दृश्यमान नगरी तुल्यन्यांतर्गत पश्यन्नात्मनि मयया बहिवोदूत यथा निद्रया यक्षात्कुते प्रबोध समय स्वात्मेवाय तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त बीजस्यांतरिवाकुरो जगदीद प्राण निर्विकन माया कलकलना वैचिचित्रीत मयावीव विजृंभयी महायोगी वयस्वेच्छया तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त ओ सहनावत सह नौ भुन सह वीकवाहै तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मा विषा वह ओ शाति 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 सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ वर्ष हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी सिक्स पटादप्यपटादप्यांतरस्तंतोरप्यंशुरांतर आंतर विश्रांति यौ अनुमीयता सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग द सुपीरियर एट्रिब्यूट्स ऑफ ईश्वर एज ए एज एनालिसिस ऑफ महावाक्य एक्चुअली and in that mahavakya tattvamasi we are right now discussing the tatpada vachya artha and that is ishvara and then ishvara were well, definitely has uh, superior attributes compared to the jiva which is a immediate meaning of word tvam in mahavakya so later we are going to equate both but right now we are discussing tatpada vichara we are doing right now tatpada vichara and the immediate meaning is ishvara with a better attributes superior attributes and uh, well those attributes uh, are discussed in the shastra and uh, in the mandukya shruti we are taking as a basis to discuss that <coughs> and that is esah antaryami esah sarveshwarah esah esah sarveshwarah esah sarvagnyah esah antaryami etc etc and so we are discussing right now the third attribute called antarya that has been discussed elaborately in brilliant equation so we are taking a support of that also and that in the third chapter of and seventh section in brilliant equation very elaborately this antaryami has been discussed antaryami means inner controller inner control of the entire world which has been divided into three parts adhi daivam adhi bhutam and adhyatma or else in simple words we can say who is the inner controller of this jiva who is the inner controller of the entire world and who is a inner controller of all the forces which which govern this universe called devatas and uh, the definition there is given is yah sarveshu bhuteshu tishthan sarvebhyah bhutebhyah antarah yah sarvani bhutani na ved yas sarvani bhutani shariram यह सर्वाणि भूतानि अंत अंत यमयति सष ते आत्मा अंतरयामी अमृत दिस इज हाउ विदारक उपनिषद डिफाइन्स अंतरयामी इनर कंट्रोल ईश्वर हैज बीन कॉल्ड एज ए इनर कंट्रोलर ऑफ एवरीथिंग सो यह सर्वेशु भूतेशु तिष्ठन वन हु रिसाइड्स इन एवरीथिंग वन हु एबाइड्स इन एवरीथिंग सर्वेभ्य भूतेभ्य आंतर हु इज इनर मोस्ट in all the beings in all the things yam sarvani bhutani na veda one which is never available for objectification one which is not one who is not perceptible who is not never available for objectification by anything in either by devatas either by the jivas or either by the world world of course it is a inert but it cannot but still let's say so basically 
we should can take uh, devatas and jivas who are conscious beings and therefore they can be they should be able to objectify ishvara no ishvara is never available for objectification either by devatas either by jivas and yes sarvani bhutani shariram and all these beings and things are the bodies of ishvara means the entire world is a body of ishvara and fifth yes sarvani bhutani antah yamayati and one who is a inner controller of everything sat eshate atma antaryami amruta in fact that ishvara which is the meaning of the word tatpada immediate meaning direct meaning of word tatpada is actually te atma that is your atma so this antaryami is you ishvara is you that's what it says i mean jagat karanam so the atma well is brahman brahman is jagat karanam and therefore well um, jagat karanam is ishvara and therefore you are ishvara basically so it's very clearly tells here eshate atma antaryami amruta which is amruta which is not subject to time and therefore it's very simple to understand that uh, this is indicating this sachidanand brahma basically is your atma which is in the form of this ishvara which is in the form of antaryami who is inner controller so all pervading inner controller with this five features is called antaryami anyway and then from verse 165 each feature has been explained and the first feature is yah bhu sarveshu bhuteshu tishthan one which um, ishvara resides in all abides in all and well bridana kumarishan does not give logic but vidyarnya says giving an example of a thread and cloth just as thread basically abides in the cloth being a cause material cause and therefore it very clearly says if you see verse 165 tantu pate sthitah tantu abides in the I mean the thread abides in the cloth because here we are saying here antaryami definition the first feature is sarveshu bhuteshu tishthan one which one who abides in all all mean all an adhidaivam adhyatmam an adibhutam abides in all how it abides being a material cause so it says here yad upadanataya tantuhu pate pate sthitah upadanataya in the form of a material cause upadanataya is a thambute trutiya so upadanataya it is which is in the in the form of a material cause well definitely it is the thread is uh, a thread is um, a thread abides in the cloth well tatha in a same manner sarva upadana rupatva one who is a material cause of everything one who is a cause of everything sarvatra ayam avasthita one who abides in everything so first feature has been explained that the cause always abides in the the effect and therefore and uh, well that is how this is a first feature okay then this we have seen in last uh, you know in the last class but i am just repeating you know to give a total idea of what we are discussing and then in verse 166 well uh, the second feature has been explained and patadapi antarha tantu now antarha because the second feature in the definition uh, in the bridanik upanishad in definition of tantaryami in bridanik upanishad is sarvebhya bhutebhya antarha one who is innermost in all the beings and therefore now to, to, this has to be explained again with the example same example thread and our cloth so well thread is a cause of the cloth then thread is basically interior to the to the uh, to the cloth and then well of course uh, thread it is not a final cause thread itself is an effect and therefore its cause which is a small fiber etc smaller fiber well which he calls as a amshu that amshu is more interior to the thread thread is more interior to the cloth so the cause will be always you so no effect to, it's a journey now he has started a journey actually journey from effect to the cause and so thereby he will prove everything other all other features also so so within the cloth there is a thread within the thread is a fiber and of course fiber also is an effect then definitely and it is it is born out of cotton and therefore cotton becomes a material cause and therefore cotton is still interior and this is a fourth layer right so we have layer 
So cotton is interior to the fiber. Fiber is interior to the um, thread and uh, thread is interior to the uh, cloth. So this is how it is. So that is how this, then, then Ishwara also will be like that. Being a cause definitely must be innermost etc. That's how he says. So well uh, <clears throat> and ultimately this journey should end somewhere because each each thing which you say which is in, uh, uh, in interior definitely proves to be again uh, effect. So then definitely the final thing must be the cause should not be the effect naturally. Otherwise still the journey will continue. The inward journey will continue. The journey will always come to an end. And therefore, uh, well, the ultimate cause itself, uh, uh, well, it should not be an effect. That must be the cause only. And so, and therefore here now that for so far as cotton etc is there, then there are two ways, right? I have already told you yesterday also. You can go by a scientific way or you can do it uh, by a Shastri method, right? Shastri, so the method given in the Shastra. So and the cause you can find out till you will arrive at the Ishwara only. For us, Ishwara alone is a cause. And then cotton means, well, again, you go to the molecule and the cotton, basically, it's a, it's a, it's a earth. Okay, then, well, earth from that, you can go to the, you know, um, our um, fire and fire to the water and water to the, I'm sorry, water and water to the fire and fire to the, actually, the air and air to the space. Like that, interior. It's a cause. Every cause is interior to the, its effect basically and therefore ultimately Ishwar alone will be will arrive at if we employ method of a Shastra then the final cause which is Ishwara which is not an effect it is a causeless cause right it is a causeless cause that is Antaryami and a scientific way well then they they arrive at the energy or something right they can molecules and atoms and subatomic particles and etc etc anyway but there, there we cannot employ that method because ultimately they are also not sure what is the final thing, you know, what is the building block, what is the one cause. They are really trying to find out one cause of the entire creation. So they, they, they say we will find out this cause, which is the building block of the entire universe. They are in a process. Now Hig boson, etc. they are saying, but they will change, they will change all these things. So we are not, we don't have a final answer if we employ a, scientific method definitely they are also find, trying to find out the cause of the entire creation anyway so here the verse says patadapi antaraha tantu interior to the cloth is the thread tantoho api antaraha amshuhu amshu means the fiber fiber is interior to the thread and uh, why why you call it interior because upadana karanatva vidyaranya says because fiber is the material cause of the thread and uh, like that you, we can go further and we can arrive at, uh, you know, the final cause. And so journey from ka effect to the cause, karyam to karanam. Well, it's an internal journey. Where does it end? Journey we should end, you know. And then, of course, scientists are struggling. But then we are, we can tell ourselves that antara tamatvat antaryami yaha yatra so anumiyatam. Naturally, because with the pratyaksha, you cannot arrive at the final cause. Naturally. You can go one or two places, I mean one or two layers in, in, a, in your journey. You can cross one or two layers of cause effect, cause effect. But then ultimately, well, you have to do anuman. So, so means this final cause, anumiyatam means may it be inferred by you because Pratyaksha Pramana can reach only up to one or two levels. That he says in the verse number 167 now. So this internal journey basically, uh, you know, starting uh, from this effect to the cause can be done with Pratyaksha Pramana up to a particular layer, particular level you can say, one or two layers. So he says Dvitri. Dvitri means either two or three layers up to that. Antara kakshanam darshane. Antara kaksha. So this degree of the level of this in, internalization, internalness or internal internality, in, internality, okay, internality. Because antara tvam. So we have to make a abstract noun of this. Antara means internal. 
in antaratvam means internalness let's that's better actually and so antaratva kaksha layer level basically so the degree of this uh, layer of this uh, internalness well dvitri so we we can you can go up to first level or a second level or etc with the pratyaksha i mean so let's say you know if we take an example so if you, the cloth then the internal uh, uh, well first layer is a thread and then then the fiber will be a second layer that also we may be able to see then cotton also the third layer well of cotton comes under the third level of internality that also you may be able to say tell and even cotton also you can divide into a small particles perhaps you may be able to see or with the whether other other instruments well you can enhance your perception and you can see still but then you can once you go to a a molecular level or something well then it well it won't be and therefore he says here this antara kaksha basically means this degree of internality or level or uh, of internality or layer of even internality well so there the layers are there thread first layer etc i mean the fiber second layer cotton third layer etc but uh, two or three layers you can or two th two three means you can take little more also no problem but he just give an example two three layers so don't say he says two three but i am able to see cotton also and i am able to see the small particles also and therefore i am, i can go up to sixth level uh, layer also no problem nothing to it but some after some layer you will have to give it up perception and with enhanced perception also you are not able to see even uh, with the all our scopes you know microscope and all that <laughs> you are not able to see that so darshane api antarah navikshate well this internality well basically after two or three layers etc darshane api well it is this ultimate layer ultimate let's talk about ultimate layer now ultimate layer is not visible here antarah navikshate it has been told so that is not available for basically um, for perception so this is even third feature we have to include in this when this the final final layer of internality that is final cause causeless cause right is not available for objectification that's the third feature i already told you so the cause the, the i mean the ultimate cause must be the innermost innermost right and that cause well navikshate antarah is equal to antar tamah you have to take it that way final layer of internality final cause well navikshate is not available for perception it is not it is imperceptible it's not visible it is not able available for objectification etc etc so navikshate and uh, so this is a so then then what how will you know you are talking about this and you, you are you are saying it is not available for any perception even with the enhanced perception with the scopes and everything microscope and these and while well, it still it is not available then how can you talk about it that um, well antaryami is ishvara is how can you talk about it so well so that's a general principle whatever cannot be known through pratyaksha we have to uh, know through anuman so that's what we are doing So Vidyarthi Swami ji says, "Tata, therefore, since it is not available for perception, tata means this. Since it is not available for perception, replace every word by you know appropriate uh, meaning. Then you will find the whole verse is in your mind. Tata means therefore. Therefore means wherefore. Wherefore means actually there. Therefore means since the since the the final cause, the what which is innermost is not available for perception." युक्ति प्रतिभ्या युक्ति शुद्धिभ्या में ये बात निर्णय है देर फॉर यू यू कैन अराइव एट यू कैन यू नो अराइव एट दिस इनर मोस्ट लेयर ऑफ इंटरनालिटी और दिस इनर मोस्ट आई मीन द कॉज फाइनल कॉज ऑफ द होल क्रिएशन बाय बाय श्रुति युक्ति भ्या या बोथ बाय श्रुति प्रमाण एंड युक्ति प्रमाण एंड युक्ति में सर्वान प्रमाण so in tarka shastra you know they 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 heavily depend upon this tarka or anuman and they also do the same thing see when uh, uh, when they talk about this uh, mit minuteness of um, i mean uh, of the size etc they they say this what the minutest particle is what they call it as a parman 
एंड दे दे डिफाइन परमाणु एज वॉट एज एब्सोल्युटली स्मॉल थिंग एंड विच कैन नेवर बी डिवाइडेड दैट्स हाउ इट इज दे से परमाणु इज अ फाइन सी वॉट हैपन्स इज दे दे से द होल क्रिएशन हैज कम फ्रॉम परमाणु एक्सेप्ट आकाश आकाशा इज नित्यम सो आकाशा डज नॉट हैव परमाणु आकाशा वॉज देर ऑल द टाइम इवन इन प्रलय ऑल्सो बट देन अदर फोर एलिमेंट्स विच केम दे वेर धेर इन द परमाणु फॉर्म परमाणु मीन्स ए ए माइन्यूएस्ट थिंग विच कैन नॉट बी डिवाइड फर्दर कैन नॉट बी डिवाइडेड फर्दर दैट्स कॉल्ड परमाणु अणु इज ऑल्सो दे दे कम टू द लेवल ऑफ एटोमिक लेवल बट देन दे से नो अणुज अगेन कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन टू परमाणु बट द परमाणु इज द माइन्यूट माइन्यूटेस्ट और स्मॉलेस्ट दैट्स बैटर बिकॉज समटाइम प्रॉब्लम so 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 basically smallest particle which cannot be divided further those parmanus of vayu um, jalam agni and prithvi they are all hanging in this space in the pralaya space is there all the time is nitya and these all parmanus are hanging there and then this parmanus join oh how how they join and make this gross elements because that is ishwar ishwar ichha ishwar is there ishwar uh, well he sankalpa ishwar sankalpa about a creation and as he does a sankalpa this parmanu starts joining and then will form a, a anu and then well anu will join make say dvanak and then the three 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 that uh, duplets or uh, well uh, well they join and duplex or whatever so they join and make a triplet and then then quart- uh, quartet etc whatever so that that's how ultimately parmanu becomes this gross element parmanu of what parmanu of the vayu parmanu of the of the agni all which were there in the pralaya pralaya, pralaya. well at the time of a creation they start joining but then but all are hanging and you know floating around in this space then this basically parmanu of a earth should join parmanu of a earth only another parmanu of earth then only it is possible but then all are hanging then a, a parmanu of the earth will join with the parmanu of the uh, of the fire etc then the then this gross elements cannot arise uh, ishwara is there why do you worry he they say ishwara is there ishwara sankalpa that's how a parmanu of earth will join with parma- another parmanu of earth ah huh? no 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 disorder ishwara is right there ishwara is a nimitta karan of the creation understand this ah huh? ishwara is a nimitta karan then parmanu is a upadan karan they are different yeah that's how they say they <laughs> very nice right so atomic theories so very beautiful and uh, well scientists don't believe that ishwara etc but scientists also will say like this only ultimately atomic theories they also have anyway but our nayayika is basically more than a scientist so he says no 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 well all parmanus are there but ultimately they join in a certain fashion in order to create this intelligent all elements beautiful elements gross elements from which the whole gross in world has come so that uh, ishwara which is a intelligent cause nimitt karan is right there and he he does that job and properly and appro i mean f- uh, he systematically combines all together anyway so what they say is this minute uh, the smallest particle basically is uh, def- i mean they define it as a parmanu they call it as the smallest one and which can never be divided that is and same way well say say there is a vibhu also vibhu means what there is something which is infinite in size and which cannot expand further parmanu is something which is smallest cannot be divided further vibhu is something which is infinite which cannot be expanded further parmanu and vibhu okay these two things are there and then how will you arrive at well, vibhu vibhu means infinite in size how do you see your with you can give me though your eyes i want to see infinite because i am i am basically in search of brahman and therefore i also want to see infinite 
and therefore i would like to uh, you know see uh, because you are you say there is a infinite which which cannot be expanded further means you must have seen no 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 nobody can see infinite that's correct then how do you arrive at well basically uh, you know you should arrive at what is not available for perception you should arrive at by inference right so anumana pramana so we tell to this nayakas the way you arrive at anu i am to arrive at parmanu or a vibhu by anumana pramana but the smallest one also you cannot see the infinite one also you cannot see then therefore pratyaksha won't work and therefore basically you you are arriving at by uh, uh, by inference only well so same way we are also arriving at innermost and the cause of everything that is antaryam ishvara by anumana because the our our cause is also which is the final cause which is not an effect like like your parman which is smallest which cannot be divided further your vibhu which uh, which is infinite cannot be uh, cannot be uh, you know expanded further same way our antaryami also is like that which is innermost and which is cause of everything which is not an effect and therefore that antaryami we also arrive at by uh, anumana oh if ishvara is you arrive at by anumana yeah then then you and me what is the difference you were that day shouting you were that day shouting against us that when we were proving ishvara with the logic you were saying uh, you should you cannot prove you gave so much of arguments you know and snatch my snatch the microphone from me well what are you doing so ishvara is not a, a we, that is how vidyaranya is very clear he says shruti yukti byam yeah the antaryami the cause of everything which is not an effect the causeless cause which is innermost well definitely not through pratyaksha through anumana but before that shruti shruti talks about it and therefore what shruti talks about it we so supply some reasoning in order to make you understand that in order uh, we give certain reasoning so that your intellect will absorb this concept of ishvara as antaryami and so supported that that's a difference between vedantina and, and nayayika nayayika proves ishvara without any shruti support and uh, i have given you the logic also right the donkey's logic <laughs> anyway so if you go by logic there will be logical fallacies if you employ just logic there will be logical fallacies all the time in anything anything because the whole creation also is does not fit into logic really speaking if it if it fits into logic it is a real creation if it fits into anything which fits into the logic means you can you are able to categorize it by logic you categorize everything that's what the nayaka does everything they categorize and therefore sapta padartha and nava dravyani and uh, 24 uh, gunas and so everything pancha karmas karmas are five of five types this um, gunas attributes are of 24 types then dravya substances are nine types and the whole world is of seven padartha seven categories only are there everything categorize logicians categorize everything and therefore we say it, the whole creation is basically a product of maya only maya only manifest and therefore maya itself is a, basically is a something which is sadasat vilakshana and therefore the creation also is like that anyway and therefore well cannot be proven regarding ishvara of course we are we drop that topic but here ishvara cannot be proven by logic so definitely the antaryami here one of the attributes of ishvara antaryami means ishvara antaryami the direct meaning of antar it's a synonym antaryami means ishvara exact synonymous word is ishvara i know exact synonymous okay synonymous okay and therefore <laughs> so this is this is a difficulty i have okay and therefore this logical fallacies will be there always that's how this is a very nice statement of puja swami ji is this what veda talks about ishvara punya papa devatas lokas and this atma etc they they are beyond logic definitely beyond logic but it is Ill, not illogical also 
and that logic we supply in order to support the statements of the Shruti is called Shruti Sammata Tarkaha. That's called Shruti Sammata Tarkaha. So please understand this, uh, uh, this Tarka. We also definitely employ Tarka. In fact, one should, the Vedantic student is required to have this capability of reasoning. Absolutely. Otherwise, one will not be able to assimilate the ideas. So, so in, just to prove what the subject matter of the Veda is not illogical, we supply logic. Not what we, we are proving what Veda says. Never say that. Never say that. We are trying to prove or we are proving with the logic. Veda says what Veda says. Never. What Veda says is beyond logic. Because subject matter which is, beyond, which is within logic must be available for perception also. Certain data from perception. Yeah. Samaji, what is available for logic is not available for perception. Then only you apply logic. Correct. But data comes from the perception. All data comes from perception. Even the Nayaka is trying to prove uh, Ishvara. Well, immediately they come to the creation. How do you say Ishvara is? Oh, Ishvara is a creator. Nimitta Karana. Intelligent cause. Oh, fine. Very good. Then, uh, well, uh, how will you prove it? No, this is a creation. Okay, so the perception. You will have any anumanam, any logic needs data. That's what scientists are doing. Scientists collect the data and uh, with the experiments and then they try to prove something. Experiments are nothing but they are available for perception. And therefore, then in order to generate data, well, that's a perception through the senses and enhanced perception, etc. You generate data and then definitely from there you conclude something. Anyway, so here we also apply logic and uh, I mean, uh, we also do Anumanam to prove innermost Ishvara, Antaryami Ishvara. And that is Antarat, what is, what is that Anumana Vakyam? Antaratvam Taratamyam Kvachit Vishrantam Taratamyatvat Anutva Taratamyavat. So this, this is a, 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 a Anumana Vakya. What it means? Antaratvam Taratamyam Kvachit Vishrantam. So this internal journey, you know, uh, well, ultimately, Kvachit Vishrantam. Well, this internal journey, well, basically must culminate somewhere because it is Antaratvam, this, this journey of internality, Taratamyam has a gradation, right? Right? Because what is, co what is cause right now is proven effect. You go still interior. Then you find a cause. Then that becomes an effect. So this is a gradation. Taratamyam is gradation. Antaratvam taratamyam kvachit vishrantam. This internal journey of this, you know, uh, of uh, finding a cause ultimately or finding the antaryami is well, must culminate somewhere because it's a journey of gradation. Taratamyatvat. Any journey of a gradation will ultimately should halt somewhere. And uh, being a journey of a gradation, definitely, any journey of gradation basically means should culminate somewhere. Similarly, because journey, journey means culmination must be there. Anyway, and so here journey, internal journey, well, definitely culminate somewhere. And that is because it's a journey of a gradation. And that culmination will be antaryami. So in fact, okay. The cause is in, uh, interior. Oh, that is effect. Okay, its cause is interior. Okay, that is effect. Its cause is interior. Okay, now the final cause. Because that cause should not be effect. Yeah, otherwise, you know, the, the, you will continue. Class will be over. But you, are, you continue. Because, <laughs> yeah, because you are counting now. Oh, Swamiji, I have reached to the nth level now. Nth level of uh, internality. Inter, internalness, okay, nth level of internalness, okay, stop there, no, 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 that's a effect, I am trying to find a cause of it, now then, yeah, so you, it goes on and on, that's called anavastha dosha, this is called anavastha, so you, there is no finality, if there is no finality, you cannot arrive at the truth, and therefore, the final cause must be Cause only, not effect. Otherwise, your journey will continue. So, if it is an internal journey, should culminate into 
ए अंतर्यामी विच इज ए कॉजलेस कॉज विच इज नॉट इफेक्ट लाइक दैट परमाणु ऑफ ए तर्क शास्त्र राइट दे आर डिवाइडिंग एंड डिवाइडिंग एंड डिवाइडिंग टू फाइंड द स्मॉलेस्ट वर्क देन दे हैव दे हैव दे हैव सेड बस दिस इज फाइनल दिस इज अ स्मॉलेस्ट वन इज दिस परमाणु विच कैन नॉट बी डिवाइडेड फर्दर और द इनफाइनाइट विभु विभु इज समथिंग इनफाइनाइट विच कैन नॉट बी एक्सपैंडेड फर्दर फाइनल आंसर ऑफ कोर्स थ्रू अनुमान देन वी ऑल्सो थ्रू अनुमान ईश्वर अंतर्यान फाइनल आंसर कॉजलेस कॉस नो मॉर इफेक्ट दैट इज हाउ इट इज सो कंटिन्यूंग पटरूपेण संस्थान पटस्तोर्वपूर्य सर्वूपेण संस्थान सर्वस्वपुस्तथ एक्चुअली आई आई यू नो I forgot to tell you the, even the third point we have proved. See the uh, uh, dvitya uh, in the verse number one hundred and sixty-seven. If you see, the, uh, well, the second line proves uh, the third arm, uh, the third feature of the antaryami. You know, navikshete tataha yukti shuti bhyam even niranaya. See the first feature I told you: the antaryami abides in the whole creation as a cause. Second, antaryami is innermost. That also we have proved. That is that we have proved in verse one hundred and sixty-seven, first line. Then the third feature that antaryami is never available for objectification, not perceptible, etc. That is proved in the third line. Navikshate tata. Since it is not available for perception, the antar tamaha basically means antar tamaha means the innermost um, well layer of internality. Which is the the final cause? Well, na vikshiti, since it is not available for perception, yukti shuti bhyam even nirnaya. Well, it is to be, it is to be proven or it is to be understood through anumana pramana. So the third feature of this antaryami, which I have, which we have, you know, discussed in the begin beginning itself, that it is not available for objectification. That is proven here in this uh, second line of verse one hundred and sixty. Seven. Now, fourth feature has been uh, discussed in the verse one hundred and sixty-eight. And uh, well, uh, so the fourth feature. What is that fourth feature? Well, this one, since it is the karanam of everything, it is the cause of everything. Well, this cause alone appears in the form of different karya. Like thread appear in the form of a shirt, or thread appear in the form of a handkerchief, etc. Well, or tablecloth, etc. So it's a one cause appearing in the form of different effects. So by assuming the, how how they uh, one cause assumes, one cause appears in uh, different forms by assuming different names and forms, and therefore the cause basically assumes um, I mean different naam rupas, and these naam rupas uh, well be, we, they will be uh, called as a vesham basically. It's an appearance, right? It's an appearance costume you can say. One cause alone appears in many ways. Like one wood appears in the form of a desk, and one wood say appears in the form of a cot, or etc. etc. Or a, you know table etc. Chair. And so same way. So by putting why why but then why appear why why what is the need on the part of Antaryami to appear in all these names and forms? Why? Because it wants to do vevara. Therefore, if naam rupas are not there, vevara will not be possible. So. And he, that's how, uh, since it is the innermost and the cause of everything, it cannot do any vevara. Not available for perception itself. Nyan vevara itself, he is not available. Where is further? <laughs> so no question. There are two vevara. Vevara means don't think of anything. Vevara means a transaction. Transaction between you and the world through the instruments. Yeah. So when you use a, a sense organs, it's called nyan vevara. When you transact with the world uh, through organs of action, it's called karma vevara, and therefore, ultimately, but these senses should be there, and uh, organ of action should be there, and they themselves cannot do unless they sit somewhere. They 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 ha. Huh? If they have to function, they have to sit in one office. They have to buy one or take on rent some office, and then they sit there. And they do avara with the whole world, so so the, we have seen that right in Tattva Buddha. This gross body is a 
basically a place is an abode for all subtle body to to be there inside and then with the help of subtle body we will, this transaction has been done anyway so different names and forms will should be there before uh, for the vevara so like gold also has gold cannot do any vevara gold when it appears in different forms well definitely in forms of bangles and etc and you know chain and everything then for available for transaction right for doing a vevara for for utilizing them for with a different for a different purposes so same way this our antaryami also ishwara also he puts on varieties of the veshas like a man is a vesha woman is a vesha etc prithvi is a vesha with all all you have to take all the three devatas are also vesha right the same ishwara we have seen also same ishwara when looked upon uh, from a given angle from a given force natural force we call it devata from one standpoint standpoint of a vayu well we call vayu devata so you have to take adi bhuta adi daiva and uh, adhyatma all are veshas jiva is a vesha of a ishvara devatas are a vesha of a ishvara and the whole world also is a vesha of ishvara and then transaction between jiva and and um, this world or devatas and the world or between jiva and devatas all all kinds of vevaras you know possible when ishvara when takes all these names and forms as a vesha and that is called here as a vapuhu sharira any name and form which we call it as appearance costume vesha is called here as a body so it says here verse says pataha tantoho vapuhu eva so the cloth is like a vesha put on by the thread and uh, cloth noun rupa is called vapu vapu is body basically anyway so then so even that is how even see the tantu tantu cannot do vevara thread cannot do vevara but cloth definitely does vevara so tantu in the form of a ball or uh, even a table cloth does a vevara tantu does not do vevara tantu in form of table cloth tantu in the form of a shirt whatever it's a some in particular name and form then only vevara is possible that's how then then the rules of vevara is also there rules of vevara also should be there yeah since it is one ishvara alone and therefore well therefore no uh, well um, i mean no rules ultimately everything is one shishya tells to guru also you are also brahman and i am also brahman okay and therefore some na i i i i you know did namaskara so since many years i am doing okay now you are also brahman but i am also brahman you for a change better you also do some namaskara to me also <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> never so so advaitam trishu lokeshu na na nadvaitam gurunasah so that is how it has been <laughs> so bhava advaitam sada kuryat kriya advaitam na karhichit advaitam trishu lokeshu nadvaitam gurunasah nadvaitam is na advaitam Guru, gurunasah advaitam <laughs> <laughs> you understand so bhava advaitam sada kuryat bhava advaitam everyone is a manifestation of a bhava bhava means a swabhava swarupam reality yeah everyone is a manifestation of brahman kriya advaitam na grahichit in terms of kriya vevara no never therefore everything is brahman therefore i mean, it's a, it's a, you will invite papa i talked about it on sunday yeah dharma shastra says uh, dharma shastra looks upon you looks upon atma with name and form vedanta shastra looks upon atma devoid of name and form different thing all together different thing one looks upon you as a jiva jiva means a conditioned consciousness brahman conditioned by what name and form and therefore dharma shastra says uh, you should obey the rule because we look upon you as a jiva how can you say dharma shastra looks upon you as jiva whole discussion in karma kanda is what well do this yaga and you will gain punyam and then you will go to the other loka that who goes jiva goes or brahman goes is that for the whole dharma shastra looks upon you as a jiva and uh, with a name and form 
who is available for transaction, who goes from birth, birth to death and etc., who acquires Punya Bhagavan, who has a Kartrutam Bhaktrutam, everything. Because you know, Karma Kanda tells you to perform some karma. So you, Karma Kanda looks upon you, the self, as a Karta. Yeah. And uh, Vedanta Shastra, just opposite. Just opposite. So when you come to Dharma Shastra, means you look upon, uh, they look upon you as a basically with a name and form. But Samaji, it is Mithya. But Mithya is there, but then you transact, right? Gnani does transaction or not? Yeah, transact. Then what? Uh, wh who does transaction? Atma Brahman does transaction. <laughs> so he, he, consciousness along with the name and form, we call ego, etc. Well, even though it is Mithya for him, but still, it, if he does transaction, definitely transaction is done through name and form. And then, then definitely Dharma Shastra comes into the picture. Same Jnani. He, when he does transaction, he is seeing something, doing, eating something. They do have several things he is doing. He is teaching also. And several things he does. He, and therefore, uh, Dharma Shastra, well, definitely, what are the rules are there in Dharma Shastra has to be, has to be observed. Otherwise, um, you will incur papa. But Jnani will incur papam, etc. That, 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 let, let us keep it aside. But he follows. But Swamiji, why should he follow? He can even, he is beyond dharma and uh, dharma, right? Dharma, an, anyatra dharma, anyatra dharma, anyatra asmat krita krita, anyatra bhutacha bhavyacha, yatat pashyasi, uh, uh, atyat pashyasi, tad veda, yatat pashyasi, I am sorry, tad kathaya, etc. Something, I forgot that in, in Kathopanishad. Nachiketa said that. You give me the jnanam which is beyond dharma and adharma, etc. That's correct. But then jnani, even though he knows that he is beyond dharma, adharma, etc. But he vevare, he will always follow dharma. Why? 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 Because he has a freedom. He can do adharma. No, but he won't. He won't. Because dharma is his second nature. Yeah. Same karma, karma yoga, if you remember. So, uh, basically, by following karma yoga etc he has followed dharma and therefore dharma has he has formed a habit of following dharma in the vyavara and so now it's a spontaneously following dharma that's how all jnanis are following dharma by spontaneously there is no nothing kartrutam no kartrutam is there but in vyavara they will you will always find them within dharma that's their second nature. Otherwise, if they were having a dharma, etc., to begin with, where is the question of gaining knowledge? Dharma is there. Anyway, this is just by the way. And uh, we will stop here because the, the, you know, there is a puja in the 11.30. So I will take up this day after tomorrow. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om